Now, in today's video, we're doing an update on the Q2. Uh, we've been running this now, I don't know for how many months, and I just received now the box. And I wanted to give you an update on what our experience has been with the box, what has worked well, what are the things that you need to watch out for, and how can you make sure you have the best printing experience. We have had a solid experience with this box. However, there are things that you have to know when it comes to the spool types that you're using. As far as filament, it's been doing really well, but the spools are what you have to watch out for. Let's get right to it. Uh, the very first thing that you'll notice is that when you install the actual key box, and I do say install, it's not as straightforward as just connecting the box to the actual Q2. And for that matter, um, you know, even as you think about uh, the Q4, what you're going to need to do, and this is all provided for you, is you'll have this frame. And you'll notice I left all the stickers here so you can see what's going on here. But typically what happens in the 3D printing uh, space is most people build these risers so that you could vent out when you're working with uh, PLA. The cool thing about this is that Akiti is actually, or Chidi is actually providing you with a really high quality riser that has venting on the side. And you're going to see it in a couple seconds. Now the other area that you'll install is this piece right here. And I'll go ahead and open up the door so you guys can see it. This thing right here, you install this and you'll be switching kind of like where the actual uh, nozzle, uh, that nozzle area used to kind of like clean off the filament side right there. The actual uh, little silicone uh, piece remains. That doesn't change. It's the side that's over to the side. Uh, so that's something else that you'll have to uh, implement. The other thing that will happen is that the software has to have the firmware upgrade uh, in order to be able to support the box. And there's going to be a series of firmware upgrades that will take place. Now showing you on the side here, you'll notice this is the vent. And this is a really, really nice uh, venting system. This riser, high quality, injection molded, not 3D printed in any way. And I really, really like the overall, you know, smoothness and just how everything works. It's very well done, has on the bottom, has like, like a rubber channel that goes around and it just fits really nicely on the Q2. Now on the back of the printer, there's a lot going on and I have given Chidi this feedback that, you know, they should do something to, to make this cable management um, look a little bit more professional. Right now, it's um, it's organized by these clips, but you know there's opportunities to to streamline this a little bit more. So you see each one as you have right here. Now you also notice that there's two data ports: one that comes from here and is going to connect here to the printer, and then you have another one that comes from here, and then it basically comes here to kind of like the filament exchange. This is like your buffer area where you have all the filament coming in, and then it comes through here into the actual printer. You'll be changing this out as well. This is not the standard one that was there. We actually changed that. That's all there is to it, right? So it's the internal piece that you'll have to change, put in the riser, right? And there is, you know, I, I don't recall using any tools, but that's what you take care of. And then connecting these uh, cables. Now these cables, you don't want to do them when the machine is on. So you want to power things off. You never want to unplug them when they're, uh, when the box is on. So just turn everything off if you're going to unplug and move things or reorganize them before you mess with the cables. Uh, you'll notice that the box does have power because it does, you know, it is a, a filament dryer as well. So that's really nice. And this box also supports abrasive material, which is also a really big difference. So um, does everything except TPU. And it, it does have a dual gear system. And I'm going to show you something because this thing is loud. It's so loud that it sounds like, like if you were going up on a roller coaster, the cluck, 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 just like that. You're going to see it. No joke. So here is uh, the stuff that's going on here. And I'd say the combine, both of these two together, and I have here a little Jackery generator, and we'll go ahead and turn this on so you can see it. Um, it's around 26 watts that's being consumed in total. So it's not taking up a lot of power, but you have both of these going on at the same time is going to consume some power. And that's something for you to realize, right? Because most of these AMSs that you have from other providers, with the exception of one, does not require power. This does. But you can daisy chain these to have multiple connected to give you even more filament here. Now, one thing that you need to be aware of, and this is a little bit different than um, what people are familiar with with bamboo, if you are familiar with bamboo, to remove a spool from a bamboo printer or, or some of the other printers that are out there, you really don't have to do anything but just remove it. Uh, with this platform, though, you have to use the software to do it. Now, listen to this for a second. You hear that? Click, click. Let's get a little bit closer. All right, that's what I'm talking about that sounds like if you were on a roller coaster. If you're going to remove 
filament, you just can't take the filament out. So you notice right here, I have the filament right here. You just can't take it out. I can't pull this. The only way I can do that is by coming to the menu and doing remove. If I want to load filament, all I have to do is put the filament right here. So you're going to see this in a second. It reads it, but then listen to this. I feel like I'm on the Great America American Eagle, which is an amusement park here and a huge roller coaster, wooden roller coaster. And I'm going up the roller coaster before I take the dive. Listen to that. Click, 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 click. Now, that may be because this has a super robust, you know, gear system, which could be very well it. But that's the one thing that, was, well, that I've noticed. That's probably my only complaint. I wish it was smoother and quieter, but it works. And I know that there have been some defects or some challenges with the box uh, for some uh, previous versions. But from what I understand that this is the most current version and they've addressed many of the challenges that uh, have plagued maybe the other generations. Now, the other thing I'll highlight is that this, uh, again, solution is really the box two doesn't really like paper based spools, cardboard spools. It does not like. And when you start getting into a spool that is this light where you have this little, it starts to wobble and bounce and it bounces so much it starts scratching the box. So that's one thing that you should be aware of. In order to eliminate that, then you have to switch to like the standard spools. I primarily use, um, you can see here, uh, Polymaker is one of the primary brands that we use, not sponsored, but that's what we use. And what I'll do is I'll re-spool or I'll use some bamboo filament and then use their spools, which are heavier, and then you don't have any bouncing. Now let me show you what's going on here. So if you look at right here, there is kind of a mark on the lid. And there's also a mark on the other side. What's happening is as the filament lightens and the spool starts to bounce, the spool is bouncing up and down and hitting this up here. And that's where the majority of my failures took place. This has been solid, absolutely solid, happy with it, as long as I have these type of spools. Even that spool right there has problems. But these spools, no issues whatsoever. Even when they have very little filament, I'm fine. But as soon as I have something like this that has a light spool, it really doesn't like it and it has trouble. Now loading filament or changing filament is pretty straightforward, right? So you have your remove, you have your load. You can also change your type. So we'll go ahead and tap this. And then you'll notice that it has generic or cheaty. Uh, and then you have the, the you know, material type. In this case, it's PLA matte. I wish that they had more types of filament because you know, we're not using their filament brand exclusively. And the, that's the reality. Now, this is, is an issue with many brands. This is not just their issue. But what I found is that even uh, other brands like Creality are starting to support other brands, especially Polymaker, as a selection option. And I'm starting to see that more and more for other brands that have these multicolor solutions as well. So I'd like to see them to have more uh, filament types that's been tuned to the specific uh, filament that I have in the box. But again, the great thing is filament dryer. It also has, uh, does with abrasive materials and that dual gear, you know, just the, the gear system that this has for bringing in filament and then for rotating the actual spools seems to be heavy duty. So guys, that wraps up this video. See you in the next one.